afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand. And welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Wednesday, September 18, 2024, the left at 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We're having a Time for Change call tonight, a little after 9.15 p.m. Eastern. You might want to take notes. If you were to ask yourself when you're by yourself, right? You ask yourself, how committed am I to move out of the ego mind? And do I know how to do that? Well, the meditations that we do every day is the simplest way to do it, is to move yourself to leave the mind and ego alone, which means you go into meditation to focus on your breath rising and falling in a very still position, yet comfortable relaxing into the body in the now. There's no other way to master the ego mind or our thoughts. It's the only place is the now. The reason is is that in the now, we are focused only on the moment, only on that breath rising and falling, rising and falling. We're not focused on anything else. This way, we're able to kind of, not literally, but kind of figuratively step away from the mind and the ego. We all know that the ego mind is very challenging to this civilization and many others, where it, it is quite interesting that we have not mastered it because of the material physical. And then, of course, we have that uh, the constant programming, you know, from the times we enter these bodies all the way through till we leave them. Uh, it's 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 an incessant programming process. Now there's always, as we know, a cycle, right? And the cycle has not been eliminated, so that we could take a totally different direction, and which is basically self-awareness for ourselves of who and what we are. It's difficult for many of us to ascertain the fact that we have, all right, we're the body, right? But we're the God. Which one is real and which one isn't? Is the body real? Well, the body changes all the time. We know that. I mean, every cell, everything, every split second is changing. Now, you don't notice it in the beginning, but as the... Uh, on this planet, the time element goes by, you begin to notice it more and more. Now, the God, the pure consciousness that we are, we call it God on this planet, is who and what we are, so we don't change, which means we never die. What's the change for? What it, why do we have that in the mix? So we can experience. Now, we've all been experiencing this material physical change on an ongoing basis for thousands of lifetimes. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. And we've done, you name it, we've experienced it all in all of these lifetimes. We don't have recall for it because we're so immersed in the material physical world. You kind of look at this from, from a visual perspective. We are, each of us, has access to the cosmos, to all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever be on forever. That means all species, all civilizations, all knowledge bases, everything. And constantly evolving, new information coming in uh, from many of us who are experiencing 
some form of existence. Now, we don't know that because we have these elements with the ego mind that basically dictates to us that, hey, you know, you're, you're not a super powerful being. All right, get over it. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And the reason it does that is because it wants to make sure that it is over you. And the only reason we put it there is so that we can overcome it, so we can master it, which is an experience. So we have this grand... Picture yourself, uh, you know, you come to this door, it's ornate, it's got like, you know, gold gilding edging and everything on it, and different gemstones, and it's just really elaborate. And so you, you open this door, and you go inside, and you see this vaulted ceiling, and you see, and it looks, the place looks like it's been around forever. Right? Not, not grimy, dirty, and musty, but you can f- tell that it's seasoned like a great sage. And you see all of this information everywhere. It's on shelves. It's, it's you know, stacked on tables. And it's the information of your existence. It's the information about all of your lifetimes in detail. It also is the information of future lives. Quite interesting. What would happen if you were to all of a sudden have complete access to all of that? Interesting question, isn't it? Now you perceive it, right, you know, you're going, wow, that would be really fantastic. I could really review my past lives and make some comparisons and, and, and see where I'm at in this life so those lives would help me in this life. You know, I may even peek in some of my future lives. Now, like in many things, when we are not, when we have not mastered the ego mind, which means that you, you spend most of your time leaving it alone, watching it observing it, learning from it, so that you know how to master it. And it isn't your enemy at all. So you, and then you begin to master your thoughts. So you learn about your ego mind, and then as you master the ego mind, then you're able to identify your thoughts. So that you realize that, okay, all these thoughts, all this noise coming into me on a continual basis you know, sometimes you say to yourself, well, I could just turn it off for a bit. Just to have total silence and to turn that noise off. You're looking at 60,000 thoughts plus coming from other people. Isn't that wild? All of us are being absolutely lambasted with over 60,000 plus thoughts a day, 24 hours a day. And they keep replaying themselves over and over and over and over and over again. So you can see how easy it is for any of us to embrace those thoughts, bring it in, give it energy, move it into our reality and experience it. That's what happens. Now, we've been doing it for so long, we don't really step back and look at it. You know, we, we don't do that because we're so used to doing it. But I believe that some of us now are starting to say, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to step away and watch all this happen and get a different perspective and learn what, what the heck is it all about. Do I really need my ego mind? You need it in order to master it. That's what, why you need it, you, so you can master it. That's why it's there. And learn. We learn an, an, an exorbitant amount of information by viewing and observing the ego mind. You learn where all this stuff that you experience could be out of the clear blue. You go, what in the heck is that? Why am I feeling this way? I have no reason to feel this way, but I am. It's the, it's the bubbling up the ego mind. It's like when you, do, when you have a problem, we all have those, right? 
We all have them throughout this life. We have problems. We call them problems. Most of us don't say, well, what's it? let's see. Okay, so I have this problem. What's the solution? We usually say, I have this problem. What should I do? So we, we, we face the problem. We embrace the problem. And the problem goes. And as soon as it's gone, another one takes its place. And as soon as that's gone, another one takes its place. And you feel, what, what's doing this? Ego mind. It's challenging, but are you learning? Do you look at it? Well, I'm learning something here. This is an interesting one. You know, that's our childlike curiosity that comes out of us. Because we'll look at it and go, this is, a, this, is, this is an interesting one, this problem. I don't know if it is a problem. Maybe my ego mind is looking at it as a problem, but I don't see it as a problem. And it is an absolute quadrillion fact that we create every smidgen of our lives, each and every one of us. Doesn't matter what you argue about with yourself. You, you, and we have these little con- these little conversations with ourselves throughout this life where we say, "I would not ever bring that type of an experience in my life." And then you reflect and you say, "Wait a minute, I'm, let me switch gears here." What? Okay, so I I manifest this into my life. What am I learning from it? What's it teaching me? And, you know, when you start to focus on that, everyone, everything, everything, only for you. See, each one of us, we have things that are there that come into our lives, right? Some seem very random and others seem familiar. Well, when we look at that, and we start looking at it from the perspective of saying, what am I learning from this? This is, a, this is a, a teacher coming in. Right? Or it could be a student. Or both. Have you ever, have you ever and I've talked to people throughout the years that have said, you know, I have a friend and they drive me nuts. They are absolute. I just, it, I, it's, I just can't deal with it because they're just so off the wall and irritating and frustrating and everything. Those people, believe it or not, are your best teachers. Now, the ones that you go, wow, this is great, and they're just floating, and it's nice, you know what I mean? They're not your greatest teachers. The ones that really irritate you are your greatest teachers. And one might say, why is that? Because you're looking at things that are with that are in you, see, that you have that you have not paid attention to. So these people come in, not like they're saying, Oh, I'm gonna be a good teacher for this this one. That, but they come in and you start realizing through your childlike curiosity, wow, this is really teaching me a lot. And it is. It is teaching you. It's absolutely priceless when we come across people like that. You know, the ones you can't stand? You know, could be someone that you're attached with. Could be a man or woman. Could be a child. Doesn't matter. They're a teacher. They're teaching you something that you require. And the universe sends it in. Because you created it, but you don't know you did. How ironic. There isn't anything we don't create. And a lot of people have, you know, they kind of go, oh, come on. Are you kidding me? There's no way. This can't. I, there's no way that I'm the one that's creating my life. That's all done by 
you know, God up there, or this over there. It's not me. I'm not doing it. And, but in all truth, you are. Then you come into, you start to comprehend that this is, this is a real deal. You know, I'm doing this. And I'm doing it to experience while I'm in this physical form. Doesn't that make sense? Now, there's interesting things that happen that you begin to discover. We, you, can you imagine that there is a species of beings? Okay, how do I put this? That they don't feel. They don't have compassion. They don't have happiness and joy and bliss and, and, and they don't cry, any of that stuff, okay? Well, how do they experience it? They experience it through these bodies. Okay? Remember, this is, this is a different species, but they experience through us our laughter, our fear, our anger, our stress, all of it. This is what they do. Now you would, you would think that they would be wise enough to understand, to comprehend that, they, that they've got to evolve. Why is it that they don't have any of these emotions and feelings and compassion or anything? And see, what we do... We, we're such curious creatures, all of us. Someone might say, well, you're really nosy. Not really. I'm just curious. I'm always curious. It's like that childlike curiosity that we had as kids is still there. It's, it, it, we just don't put it front and center. You know, society and years in the body and conditioning and programming. And then, you, you know, you conform, right? You conform. Oh, they'll think I'm being nosy. Or someone in front of yours might say, man, you're nosy. And you go, I'm very curious. So you call it nosy, nosy I call it curious. And we are. You, you, have you ever been <laughs> in a neighborhood where, and you're not paranoid at all, and you're, you're just kind of doing your thing, you might be in this neighborhood and you, you, you move into a place and you go in and you, you, you go out and get in your car and you're kind of going, you feel like someone's watching you, right? And remember, you're not paranoid about it. You don't think about it. But you feel this energy where you're being watched. And so you look around and, you, you know, the blinds or your curtains are usually closed and, you know, the, you don't see anybody really looking so you go about your way and you come back and you have that feeling again because you know what? They are looking because they're curious. Just like you're curious about certain things. And all you do is you reflect back when you were a child and you go, yeah, yeah, I was super curious about everything, everything. Because, you know, you didn't understand it and you wanted to have the answers, so you keep asking you keep asking over and over and over again. It's like, you know, you look at the blue sky and as a kid you'd go, I wonder what that tastes what would that taste like if I licked it. That's childlike curiosity. Or I used to look at rainbows when I was really tiny and I'd look at the rainbow and I would say, I wonder what that tastes like. I would. I would sit there and say that because it looks so wonderful had to have some kind of flavor to it, didn't it? And what we believe we create, that's part of our makeup in these physical bodies, what we believe we create. The longer we focus on something, the more likely it is to appear in our lives. Now, most of us don't, don't, aren't plugged into that. So we find ourselves focused on something for a very long time, and we end up experiencing it in our lives. Other times you focus on things briefly, briefly, 
not really thinking about it. Your thoughts are kind of moving so fast. And, and again, it appears in your life. The only thing, we, we begin to learn that the only thing that stops that from, from occurring for us is the mind and our doubt. It's our doubt that stops it. Our natural state of being is great abundance and prosperity. Isn't that ironic? Yet, this planet and, and the majority of the civilization is poor and distraught. You kind of look at that and say, something's, something's out of kilter here. That Not really, it's just that many of us haven't gotten there yet. It's the only reason it's that way. We haven't gotten there yet. And as you well know, the majority of us really don't have a clue about it because we're so immersed in what's out there. You know what? What's out there? How do we know something you can ask yourself in the quiet time of this meditation? How do you, how do you know that your spiritual connection to this universe is alive and well? How do you know if, it's, if you're not, what is a true sign of it? Well, it's where you don't trust your spiritual connection to this universe. Now, when you do this, which all of us do, none of us are exempt from it, when you worry, that will tell you right away. It's, it's an effect of not trusting your spiritual connection to the universe, this universe. Might as well say all connecting universes. And what does that do for us? Once we know that, okay, so I'm worrying about this, and then you shift gears, you got this worry over here, and you shift gears and you go over here and you say, okay, so this worrying that I'm experiencing is an effect of not trusting my spiritual connection to this universe. And not only that, this disconnection creates the assumption that we are powerless beings who are not the real manifestors of our future. Isn't that interesting? See, and most of us, when, when you finally identify this, okay, is that ironically, 99% plus of our worries never manifest. Yet it's that little 1%. See, this is how the mind works. That little 1% that the mind worries about. Isn't that right? And see, our ego mind wants full control of reality. Nothing less. And then thinking that having a stronger, more strategic hold on this life is the most optimum place to be. So then we fall into resisting trust in life. We stop letting in love and honoring the divine mystery that surrounds us. And then the ego mind becomes very tight, tense, demanding, controlling, and worried about everything. And we tend to worry, we tend to worry because the ego abhors being weak, vulnerable, and unprotected from unexpected change. It thinks real strength is found where? Crazy, in hardness. That's where it thinks real strength is, hardness. 
and it wants total security safety on top of that and a 100% guarantee that life will be okay. But what it doesn't realize is that life is a perpetual leap of faith into the unknown. That's what this life is. The ego has forgotten that true strength is found in softness. And that water always wins over rock in the end, and it does. Our ego is learning how to have a soft, forgiving heart filled with trust. For this is the only way to relax, enjoy this lifetime, and truly become worry-free. What would it be like the civilization became worry-free? Wouldn't that be wild? And see, we add all these things because it's the ego mind. That's a good thing that we discover that, though. You know, we can start looking from outside in instead of from inside out. So this little, this, this creature, the worry, stress, fear, anxiety creature within us, it, it can be a bit tricky to catch. And sometimes it's super challenging to stop. We can actually get accustomed to blindly following the over-analytical, skeptical, doubting mindset and feel this is more intelligent and trustworthy than our free-flowing spontaneously arising intuition. You ever, you ever, it's like, you know our intuition, we all have it. Okay. And it, it comes from, it doesn't come from the head, it comes from the heart. That's a difference, okay. And you know that it's coming from the heart. And if you have 100% faith, trust, and confidence in yourself, and you, you have this sense, right, and you say to yourself, this is going to be fine. This isn't an issue at all. This will be just fine. This will, this will work out just fine. But the feeling that you have when you say that is majorly powerful. See, it's different. Ego mind, that's a whole different ballgame. But heart mind, it's like, you know. You just know. That's it. No uh, trying to explain yourself to yourself at all. You just know. And exactly what you're feeling takes place. So it reaffirms to you that you knew. Now imagine getting into a positive about that, where you now are trusting your intuition, and you're saying, okay, remember, not ego-minded, though. It's easy to go into ego mind and say, well, you know, I knew that was going to happen. Rather than, I know that this is okay. Same as you say to yourself, I know this isn't okay. It's a feeling that we have. We embrace that feeling. Some people ignore it. The ego mind gets tw intertwined in there and you go, ah, forget about it. And, uh, you know, that's just wishful thinking. So we always are trying to explain it away. The ego mind's always trying to explain it away. But if you have your childlike curiosity front and center, you'll just say, I know. Or something like, um, here's an ego mind one, right? Someone says to you, hey, come along. Come along with us. And your ego mind says, no, that could be dangerous. You don't really, no, do you really want, do you really want to do that? I don't think you do. Maybe, you know, you shouldn't do that. So you go, no, I'll pass. Oh, it'll be fun. Come on. What are you concerned about? Because people will pick it up. 
oh, no, I've got other things to do. You know, I've been putting them off, and I just have to get this stuff done. Can't it wait a couple more days? No, that's what I've been saying for the last several weeks. They can't wait another couple of days. Okay, well, you guys enjoy yourself. You know, have at it. That's ego mind. Now, let's flip the switch to heart mind. They say the same thing. They say, hey, come on with this. This will be fun. And you, you say, you know something? You're right. I'm in. Let's go. That's heart-mindedness. You know why? Because you know. You feel it. You're not, you don't have expectations like the ego mind. You're not, you're not attached to yourself to the outcome or anything. You're just saying, that sounds like fun. I'm in. That's the difference between ego mind and heart mind. And when we get to the point where we're finely tuned ourselves to be in the heart mind all the time, we, then we'll have mastered the ego mind. Ego mind will stay around after we've mastered it. It, it will start to realize that it's at peace. It doesn't need to worry, fret, stress, and fear anymore, that it's, it's actually found peace. Once it finds the peace, it's gone. It knows it's no longer needed, and it itself is at peace, even though it's an illusion. Everything interplays in these lives of ours. Nothing is by chance. Ego mind might ask you, might say, oh, come on, that's, you know, that's just by chance that that happened. Well, you know otherwise through the heart mind. Say, no, you say to yourself, and say, no, there's a purpose there, and I know. It's like, here's another one. You're, you're in your mind, right? You're determining that you want to, like, take a trip somewhere. In your, in your car, you just travel. Just sh- might be the next town over, some shop you wanted to check out, whatever. And your ego mind... Is saying, yeah, that'll be great and everything. Your heart mind says to you, you know, you might want to look at that. There, there, there seems to be some energetic interference involved with your trip. Now, it's not negative. Say, it's not a negative. It's, a, it's kind of like maybe you want to not do that today or tonight. It, maybe, you, maybe we'll do it uh, another day or something and we'll know. So you don't, okay? You find out that there was a major accident. You, didn't, you don't pick up on it until, wait a minute, that's exactly where I was going to go at that specific time that that happened. Okay? And your heart, mind, in a loving way, soft way, saying, eh, it doesn't feel right. Ego mind been different. Yeah, do it. Go for it. Yeah. You know? No, if you don't think, you don't think about any of it. And you're not and, and see in the heart mind, it's it's not a worry or anything. It's a knowing. It's just a knowing. It's not you know, uh being overly concerned or worried. It's none of that. It's just that you know that something in the energetic cosmic field is not something that doesn't fit there. Okay, It's not uncomfortable. It's just something that you know probably not a good time for you to go. And that's happened to millions of people on this planet where they didn't and then they watched something or saw something and said, wow, that could, have you ever done that? That could have been me. This is why it's so important that we listen to the God within us at all times. Because the gateway to the God within us is the heart-mind. Always has been the heart-mind. It's not anything else. It's our direct connection with the gods that we are within these bodies. So in the quiet time of this meditation... 
focus on the love that you are. Join in meditation. I'll return to close the sound.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Relax into your body. Focus on the breath rising and falling. Ask yourself this question. Do you feel connected with your higher self? We all know there is a higher power inside of us which can help us make those life choices and meet up with the right people so we can easily manifest any desire. So I invite you to, to make time right now to establish the sacred deep connection today. Once you discover your highest inner spiritual guidance, you will have absolute 100% trust and faith that all things will work out effortlessly for you. You will be able to manifest any dream that you have. There is no purpose bigger to be done in this life than to stop searching outside of yourself for answers and realize your intrinsic Christ Buddha nature, which is basically enlightened nature. Could there be anything more important to do than this? It's right here inside you, right now. Your purest presence is the door to enter. Just inhale deeply and hold that breath while you keep asking your higher spiritual guidance to present itself. It can be that easy. Just let go of doubt and trust in the process. Do not inhale again until you feel some kind of higher connection. Just feel it. Oh, so good. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. We'll return here tonight and a little after 9.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our time for change call. And Thursday, September 19, 2024. We'll have to 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude at all times. No matter what's happening within you nor outside of you, open your heart and allow the magic to flow in.